Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Good morning. I pray you are well. As I come to you this morning to pray with you, I pray that you are uh, managing to get the groceries, I particularly. I, I was able to actually do quite a big shop this week and I managed to meet quite a few of our members. Um, I met um, uh, Dai's mom, I met um, Samaima, and it was just lovely to be able, and I'm practicing the, the long distance hug. And it, it's so funny, I, I, I can't cope, you know I'm a hugger. And many people have to stop me from hugging them because particularly I could be infectious. But anyway, we pray and we hope you are all well. I want to pray with you this morning before we go into the word of God uh, on our midweek service. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we are able to come before you to worship you. Lord, as we come in our different homes, we realize that, Father, we may not always be perfect. We do things that sometimes upset you. We say things that sometimes upset you. And so we realize that your gospel, your word is clear that none are righteous. So we ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, when we have forgotten to do the things we're meant to do and we did things only according to our own will. Forgive us, Lord, when we judged others so quickly and we're so slow to be kind. Lord, forgive us when you prompted us to make that phone call to someone who's lonely, but we're too selfish to even pick up the phone. Help us, Lord, during this time to realize how a lonely world it would be if we only were self, only on our own. Help us to remember others, to remember to ring others, to remember to be loving, to remember to to, to prompt and remember others who could be on their own and struggling at this time. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that we as a church family, we as a people are still alive to hear this word. Many who wanted to be alive today have died. Many who wanted to be here during this period have not been able to be here. Just because in Australia we are slightly better in terms of the COVID, we thank you, Lord that you have kept us safe. We thank you that we have kept to the rules, that we've stayed in our homes. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that we are listening to what is, some of the things that we don't agree with, but we are listening to what the government is telling us to do. We miss our church family, Lord. Look after each and every member. Keep them safe, keep them sane, keep them, you know, loving to one another. I uh, thank you, Lord, for the pastor, thank you for those who are working behind the scenes. Thank you for our church family who are praying fervently for this pandemic. We pray, Father God, that let this season pass so we can testify of a time when we couldn't enter buildings, but we worshipped in our homes. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm now going to call Ben to come and read the Word of God. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much, Bridget. And uh, I hope you're all having a, a wonderful week. Today's scripture will be read from Acts 2, 42 to 47. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. 
They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. And now I'd like to ask Johnson to come and grab his message. Thank you very much. Good morning, saints. We just want to thank you for listening to our message. Uh, and I just want to thank Ben for the reading of the Word of God and also for Bridgetta for the prayers she had offered in the first place. Uh, our message this morning is coming from the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And I've come up with a theme, they devoted themselves. They devoted themselves. This passage is a living snapshot of the life of the early church. It reveals their devotion and faith. It reveals what was central to their lives and the character of their discipleship. The passage says they were devoted Devoted to what? <laughs> they were devoted to what? They were devoted to Bible study and worship. Bible study. First it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. I've always interpreted that to mean they spend time in study and worship. Both are very important aspects of our faith. We learn about and are drawn closer to God and become better disciples through Bible study and worship. In a recent survey, they found that only 61% of Christians know that Jonah is a book in the Bible. And 30% didn't know where Jesus was born. 24% of Christians are very, uh, thought that the book of Isaiah was in the New Testament or didn't even guess where it could be found. That shouldn't surprise us. How can we know anything about a book we never read? Contrast to the early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. People are starving for answers to problems. Some are dying from spiritual starvation. And they, yet they never open up God's guidebook to life. That is the Bible. Or they never attend a worship service and just soak in the presence of God. The early church devoted themselves to this effort. The Bible, it is the manual for our lives. If you buy something new, it could be a TV, it could be anything, it comes with a manual. Why does it come with a manual? So that it helps you to put those things together. So I'm saying the Bible is the manual of our life, and we need it. The early Christians, they had fellowship. They devoted to fellowship. They devoted themselves to fellowship. This is an extremely important aspect of our faith. God created us to be in fellowship with one another, and didn't create us to be alone. It's always easier when two share the Lord. We can experience it this, during this coronavirus. We are suffering from loneliness. And I encourage each one of us just to give a call to someone. Just to talk to them, even when you are locked in your rooms. Just give a call to someone and just try to find out how they are doing. Just think about the number of times we have set up tables for meals or meetings, even at our church. While the tables were... We use iron very heavy. It's a whole lot easier when someone helps. Normally you do things with someone. It makes life easier. In my own house, normally when we are preparing for any meal, we ask our kids to say, can you prepare the table? And every one of them runs, some collecting the, the teaspoons, some the plates, and others, different things. And in two minutes, everything is ready. It's the same with our faith. 
Fellowship through worship, through play in work and in missions allow us to share the Lord with one another. And we grow in faith. Breaking bread. They were devoted to breaking bread. That is what it says. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. This definitely deals with celebrating Holy Communion. But it also deals with sharing of meals. Meals are very important. Meals are very important. Invite someone to your house. Even though we know that we keep a distance, but it's always important to have someone in your house sharing a meal with. I believe when things go well, we would try to invite other people to our homes. I believe there's a very rich blessing that comes from sitting down across from a friend and a fellow Christian and eating together. To me, it's almost sacramental. It reminds us of the meals Jesus shared with his disciples, especially the Last Supper. It's very important for us as Christians to be willing to invite others for those meals. Think how much love has been shared and given through these, those meals. Fellowship dinners are an important aspect of the church. They build up the faith and they feed the faithful. The early church knows this. And we can also practice it. The early church was committed to prayers. They devoted themselves to prayer. How many of us have ever devoted ourselves to prayer? Prayer keeps our hearts and minds on God. It keeps us in tune with God. We are ever talking to God. We are ever communicating to God. Let's try an experiment. Look around you and find things that have blue in them. Go ahead. I didn't take long, did it? With a blue mindset, you find that blue jumps out at you. A blue dress, a blue book, a blue with a stained glass, and so on. Have you ever noticed how after you buy a new car, you start to see that make and color everywhere? That's because people find what they are looking for. At times in our lives, God seems strangely absent or even distant. But the problem isn't that God is, has disappeared. The problem is that we simply lack a God mindset. When we develop a God mindset through prayer, we begin to see God's work everywhere. The early church devoted themselves to prayer and grew daily. Why? The early church devoted themselves, but why? Scripture tells us they devoted themselves to Christ in these ways because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. It also says that the people had glad and generous hearts. They praised God and God added to their number those who were being saved. They all had one thing in common. They experienced the saving grace of Jesus Christ in their lives. They experienced the love of God and the forgiveness of their sins. They experienced the reality of promise and the hope of the resurrection. That's why they were committed to it. Consequently, their lives had changed. They became, became good stewards of God's message. Through the grace of Christ, they were able to live a life of praise exemplified by a glad and generous heart. That's why they were so generous. It's because they experienced Jesus Christ in their lives. And they were devoted to him. This year, our aim is to expand our mission statement from simply the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. To be the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We need disciples who can transform the world, not just disciples. People who can transform the world, that will make the world never to be the same. We have always been uh, out of our disciple making and transforming world. Our mission is in the new. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. He believed the gospel would transform the world, and it did. It do still does. The world is our parish. Noticing something too, this passage tells us that the early church has the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number. It was not blind. Because the early church was as devoted as they were to God and each other, and people took notice of what was happening. They saw faith in action, but more importantly, they saw the presence of the risen Christ in their lives and actions of the faithful. And that's vitally important. Why? 
We want the world to see the likeness and the presence of the Son of God, the one who sets us free from sin and offers new life in our lives. But if our actions, our words, and our lives don't bear witness to Christ, then we have missed the boat completely. And our faith doesn't make any difference. We need to have a faith that brings difference. What about us? That leads to the question, has Jesus made a difference in your life? That's basically what it boils down to, isn't it? Faith is about what Jesus has done in our life. Living the faith is about what we do in response to what Jesus has done in our lives. What has Jesus done in your life? The early church, as described here in Acts, devoted themselves to God through Christ. To what have you devoted yourself? What are you devoted to? Some people devote themselves to their jobs and to making money. Some people devote themselves to their family. Some people devote themselves to living in a field with stuff and doing. Some people are devoted to fight the spread of coronavirus. People are devoted to different things. What are you devoted to? I'm not saying that jobs, family, and stuff are bad or evil. When put in their proper context of a life devoted to Christ, these things can enhance one's life. But it's the context in which they are pursued that makes the difference. Only Christ can give new life in a person. Only Christ can give new life to an individual. Everything else falls short. Only Christ gives meaning and purpose in your life. In conclusion, we see the commitment of the early Christians described in the actions attitudes found in this passage. They were devoted to God. Their lives reflected that devotion. People saw the reason Christ in their relationship with one another, in their cooperation, in their way they cared for each other, in their worship, in their study, and in their giving. Everything could be seen in them. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who have been saved. So this passage challenges us and asks us, to what or whom are you devoted? Do others see the likeness of Christ in your actions? Are others invited to accept Christ through the witness of your life? Do you exemplify the Christian life with a glad and generous heart? To what or whom are you devoted? Are you devoted to the work of God? Are you devoted even to listening the message, to reading the Bible? Are you devoted to anything? And to whom are you devoted? I'm just urging you, encouraging you to take a step and start being devoted to something. But I would encourage you, be devoted to listen to the word of God, to prayer, to fellowship. Those are very important things for a Christian. May the good Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and true, you feed the hungry and connect all that is made. Here in your presence, we pray for our world, which is in need. We pray for the coronavirus to come to an end. For those whose lives have been affected by it. For those who have died. For those whose days find little peace. For those who never have enough, for those who choose to share, for those who work for change, and for those who ch challenge the world's complacency. Holy God, holy and true, the length, breadth, height, and depth of your love was revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Fill us with the strength to reveal your love in the world. Father, we come to you. We know you are God. 
Nothing is impossible with you. As we are gathered in our different places, challenge us, Lord, with your wealth of truth. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. May God's blessing be with us as we go. A blessing from the one who calls us together. A blessing from the one who never deserts us. A blessing for life in all times and all places. A blessing from our gracious God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us from now and evermore. Amen.